Let's give you the 450 highlights from the Ironman National. It was all on the line for Jet Lawrence, the perfect season, even though the championship is wrapped up. And Chase Sexton there on the left is definitely going to be the rider to watch and try to knock that off. But an unbelievable start for Jed in Moto One. Yeah, they're pretty much the opposite of what we're going to find out in number uh, two. Chase lined up next to him, and it was thinking that maybe this could be something. They lined up, um, but Jet executed that start, and he led every lap today, pretty much. Um, AP rode really good in the beginning part of the race, and Chase had some um, opening. Uh, a great opening couple laps out there. He was able to close in on Jet, but also make his way around um, um, a couple of the guys. But then once he got into second place, that's pretty much where he kind of ended at all day long. Yeah, here's the pass on Plessinger to get into that second place spot. It wasn't a great start for Sexton. So excellent job, as you mentioned, rallying to get to the number two spot and then try to apply some pressure. And he did for the first 10 minutes or so of the moto. A couple other battles to watch. Dylan Ferrandez over jumping, doesn't care. He needs to make the pass on Jason Anderson. Yeah, uh, great pass. I was looking forward to these battles because these two guys, they ride the same. They're both really hungry. And um, Dylan was on a roll at that point. He said he's been under the weather like myself. You can hear my voice, um, <laughs> but uh, good ride. But 20, 20 times before, this is number 21. The Jet Lawrence went in the race. Yeah, this time Lawrence is able to pull away from Sexton, Moto 1, to get that victory. But the real pressure was on a Moto 2, and it was almost ruined right there. Yeah, I mean, for Jet to be able to stop and stay focused, he did the same thing at Wash Hugo, um, which is in incredible. There's a lot of stuff going on. And the fact that even Chase had a better jump to him, and he executed and made that pass, and he went from almost dead last in the back to in the lead here in two corners. And as we're watching Dylan Frantis take a big hit right here, didn't finish the race, but... Um, yeah, Jet was up front, and that's where he needed to be at, and that's where he stayed. But this time, Sexton kept it a lot closer. You see Ferrandez out of that moto. Hopefully, he's okay. Sexton stayed in it the whole time. The gap never got to more than about four seconds. At one point, it was down under two. Mistake from Jet off the track. Yeah, Jet gets cross it and had a big moment. And, and at that point, that's where Chase was. He had about a four-second lead. It looked like Chase was kind of throwing in the towel a little bit. And that mistake allowed Chase to get back in. But then the very next lap, he literally does the same thing as Jet. Um, that was a tough, fast section. Didn't look like they lost too much time to each other. But um, that, was, that was a close call by both of those guys. Sexton kept the heat on the entire time. Jet had to be dealing with incredible nerves and pressure, which he admitted the nerves were sky high, as was the heart rate to finish it off. He joins the Immortals, 22-0. He has done it, and most incredibly, he has done it as a rookie, which no one has ever done, and here's the celebration. Yeah, launched the bike, slammed the goggles, whatever that was, um, you know, but great, man. What a great day, what a great year from Honda. I remember last year when we, Ken Robson and Chase Sexton, they, they went one, two at um, Paula. Yeah, they Honda, dominated. Honda was celebrating. You give a fast forward a year, well, that ain't nothing. Yeah, it's a lot better when you're celebrating at the final round than winning the opening round. But credit to Sexton, he's a big part of this as well because he won that Supercross championship and ended the curse, I don't really believe in that kind of stuff, but some people do, and it, I guess if you do, you say that opened up the floodgates for this when he got that title in Supercross. He's second overall today with the 2-2. Plessinger third, Anderson Sin Cerullo, top five on the day. Shout out to Dylan Wright, the Canadian, for finishing up in eighth today with eight, nine scores. And uh, that was really cool to see him come down. Another... Another feather in the cap for Honda. They dominated the championship in Canada. Somewhere around here, we have a 450 Mechanic of the Year award. And if I can find Jet, where I'm sure everybody's, uh, there he is. Mike wanted to get. He can present this award to his mechanic, Christian Ducharme. Where is, uh, where's old Christian at? There he is. Congratulations, Christian. Thank you. It's been definitely a uh, year of dreams. <laughs> definitely a season of it. It's definitely the best summer you could probably ever ask for, you know, especially uh, see if we can ever repeat it. But once in a life is probably good enough for anyone. <laughs> well, it's getting, it's getting a little uh, champagne-ish down here. But uh, seriously, congratulations to all of you guys. And uh, we'll, we will, uh, oh, we have, a, we have a question. Jet, Jet, tell us a little bit about what your mechanic means. You guys have been together for quite a while now. And, uh, you know, you guys don't do a lot of losing together so far. Uh, I mean, he's been there from day one uh, since I've been to America. He's been awesome. He's family to me. He puts in just, just as much work into the bike uh, as I do as training. So, I mean, he's an awesome human being. Um, we, uh, we fit good together. 
and uh, I don't think anyone else could beat him in a, in a mechanic thing. So, uh, but no, he's an awesome mechanic to me. He'd be an awesome friend, family. He's uh, this an awesome, awesome guy on this planet. Uh, there needs to be more people like him, actually. <laughs> well, congratulations. No, it's been a big day for you, and uh, go celebrate with the team. Jed threw his goggles into the crowd. We're going to show you. We had a rider or a young man on the podium sitting on Jet's bike. Threw the goggles in there. Jet grabbed the kid that grabbed the goggles. Oh, yeah. And then he gets to go on the podium with him. That's the kind of person that Jet Lawrence is. We've seen quite a bit of that this year. So uh, he got beat up getting those goggles, but he got to go to the podium. As I so, said on uh, my show, he got beat up getting those goggles, president. but he got to that's go to the you podium. Kiss As I babies said on my show, races. Jeff for president. Uh, that's so you got to kiss here, babies and more scenes down to the podium. All the Honda folks there. What's really cool about the way uh, Honda structures their management, you know, we talked about Lars had come up as a practice bike mechanic all the way to team manager. But I mentioned Brandon Wilson and Bill Savino, who are some of the executives here. They've worked nearly every position in this company. Oh, here we go. Pay attention to that. That's what you're going to see next year. They'll be head to head, too. <laughs> so the point I'm making here is whether you're the Lawrence brothers and the family or Lars or anyone else in Honda, it started from the bottom. Now we're here. I mean, this was not guaranteed. And that to me was the difference. We all knew that you and Ricky Carmichael were destined for greatness. Maybe not perfect seasons because we had never seen that kind of thing before. But we all knew that if everything went right, you guys could do amazing things. Uh, for Jet Lawrence, who in America was not six, seven years ago even on the radar to get to this level as a rookie, it's really unbelievable. And the craziest part is this could just be the beginning of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this transition from 250 to 450 has uh, been a, uh, a stepping stone that, I mean, we, we knew he'd be good on 450, yeah. but I think it's, it's brought out another level of him. He wasn't even this dominant in Supercross, um, you know, four months ago. You know, no. so, or 250 motocross. And 250 motocross yeah, last yeah. year. So, I mean, I think he's won more races this year than he did probably in all 250 class. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I look forward to watching the challenge. I mean, at this point, I mean, Chase Sexton, I know it was going to be a tough day for him. I, I heard it in his voice after that first moto, like he – he didn't really have an answer, and even that second one. So, uh, luckily for him, there might be some things that are changing around him, give him some new hope. But I'm telling you right now, um, these boys got their work cut out for him because I, I believe this kid, this kid out there we just witnessed is going to be, he's for real. Yeah, it is a total package, no doubt about it, and he's only 20 years old.